ברוכים הבאים לדקדוק דקות. This video is an introduction to irregular verb patterns. You have learned about perfect forms, you have learned about verbs, uh, uh, different kinds of verbs, and most of the verbs you've been introduced to have strong consonants in all three root positions. You'll recall verbs are formed, the, the basis of every verb is three consonants. That forms the root. For many verbs, all three of those consonants are what we call strong consonants. And so the vocal pattern works just the way it's supposed to. But periodically, a weak letter or a guttural letter will find its way into the three letter root and it will modify either the vocal pattern or perhaps even some of the, of the root letters that remain visible, and then it becomes more challenging to know what you're looking at. So, this video will give you an introduction to those irregular verb patterns based on what different kinds of verbs or uh, uh, letters appear in the root. So, just a quick, a quick review, what are the weak letters? They are hey, Vav, Yod, and Nun. And there are five guttural letters. They are Aleph, He, Hate, Ein, and Resh. If one of those letters gets in your three letter root, you'll most likely have an irregular verb pattern or verb form. Now there are patterns that you can use to identify what those are and figure out what the missing root letter is, for instance. And that's where Pe, Ein, and Lamed come in. Pe, Ein, Lamed is the Hebrew verb to do or work. It's, uh, it's like the acme verb of uh, ancient Hebrew. And so grammarians began using it to represent the root positions into which one of these letters could appear to create a different pattern. So the pe represents the first root position. So if a letter is in the pe position, it's the first letter in the root. The ayin represents the second root position and the lamed represents the third root position. Hopefully that's clear enough. Let me give you a couple of examples of words that fit the, into this and hopefully it'll become clearer. So for instance, if we have uh, the verb yashav, yashav, the yod is a weak letter and that appears under pe. It's the first letter in the root. Therefore, it's a pe yod verb. Did you catch that? Because the yod is in the pe position, which is the first letter. So, when you have a yod in the pe position, we call that a pe chikchak yod. Pe yod. Yashav is a pe-yod verb, pe chik chak yod if that makes sense. Let's give a couple of more examples. Let's say we have asa, asa, ein, sin, he. This verb could be in a couple categories, but here, lamed, chik chak, he, because the he here is in the lamed position, right? The he is the third of three, third lamed, he, lamed, chik chak, he, or lamed, he. Another example. Kum. Kof, Vav, Mame. Here the Vav, which is a weak letter, is in the second 
root position, which is referred to by ein. It's in the ein position, so we call it a ein, cheek chock, vav, ein vav. These, uh, these names describe the patterns created by uh, this particular letter appearing in whichever root position. So, Hebrew, a lot of Hebrew verbs are irregular, but they're regular in their irregularity. So, every time you have a peyod verb, regardless of what the other two letters are, it's going to be affected in the same way every time. Same with lamed he. It's going to be consistent. If a verb ends with lamed he, with, with he, it's going to impact the vocal pattern, it's going to impact the way that the verb works in the same way for all verbs that end in he. Same for uh, ein vav, for instance. This word, kum, is also called a hollow verb because the vav in the middle often tends to disappear. That's what mostly happens with weak letters. Weak letters tend to disappear from verbs and then you'll only have two root letters remaining, uh, gutturals tend to just impact the vocal pattern, which may make you think you have something different than what you do, unless you know how the patterns work. So here's another example of a hollow verb. Seem. Seem. This is also hollow, but instead of being ein chikchak vav, it's ein chikchak yod. So these words all impact the vocal patterns together and uh, similarly. Pe yod impacts uh, similarly. There's another uh, common pe, uh, uh, pe verb, noon pe lamed. Another pattern, common pattern is uh, pe chikchak noon when you have noon in the first root position. Okay? So, if uh, a, a letter, a consonant in the root falls in the first position, it's called a pay whatever, pay yod, pay noon. If it falls in the middle, the second, it's ein vav or ein yod. Generally, those are the only two letters used, uh, and they're called hollow verbs. If it's in the third root position, it's in the lamed position, and it's lamed he. That's most, the most common uh, lamed position would be a lamed he. So let me give you an example, and you tell me, or you tell yourself, because I won't be able to hear you, what uh, pattern this word falls into. Okay, ein lamed he. Guess from each of these three and these different examples, what pattern would this verb fall into? Perhaps you said pay ein. Pay ein. Because the first letter is a guttural, right? Pay ein. You would be correct if you said that. What else? What other pattern could this verb fall into? Perhaps you're thinking lamed hey, because the final root letter is hey. If you said that, you're also correct. It can be either one of those. And uh, asa and Allah are extremely common verbs throughout the Hebrew Bible, and they fit into both pay ein and lamed he categories. The interesting thing about this chart and these, these patterns is that irregular forms abound. They abound because, you know, there's only 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet and there, you know, eight or nine of them are either weak or guttural. And so when they appear in a, in a, a verbal root, it modifies the pattern. And so irregular, maybe think of that with quotation marks around it. Um, because sometimes it might seem like the irregularities are more regular than the regularities. Um, and that's just a feature of the language. And the more often a word gets used, the more uh, 
generally, the more it changes, the more irregular it becomes. So in English, think about the difference between go and went. That's a, an extremely common verb, but it's also extremely irregular. Go and went come from the same verb, but they don't share any letters in common. Um, this is just another example of that same concept being applied in a different way. This is one of the ways that Hebrew does that. Um, and it's a little different from English, but it makes sense. If you can wrap your mind around it, it makes sense. Lech le shalom.